few years back, I was introduced through Suleiman to uh, Sheikh Fendi, um, and it's you know it's, it's a very transformative process over the last few years. Alhamdulillah, a lot of bumps, but Alhamdulillah, it's uh, for me. It's I I feel it's definitely the purest form of Islam uh, that I've seen in my life, and uh, Alhamdulillah, I've had the opportunity to kind of meet many different scholars and you know just through the school and through our community here um, but I can tell you honestly this is for me personally uh, the most beautiful group and the most the purest uh, group that I've met alhamdulillah and so I just wanted to welcome everybody and welcome uh, Luqman Hoja and I hope everybody can benefit uh, something uh, inshallah and thank you for coming thank you Assalamu alaikum. Any questions? Anyone has? Welcome to you. And also, excuse me, I encourage everyone to ask questions because a lot of times what will happen is after they leave, then you think of a million questions that you should have asked. So if you think of something, don't hesitate to ask. You know, it's a very, very uh, good opportunity, I think. And, you know, uh, People have to drive six, seven hours just to ask these questions sometimes. So please take advantage of uh, you know the time, inshallah. Thank you. Any credit? Elzbilah in the Shaytan Rajim, Bismillah Rahman Rahim. Destur, Istafrullah, Azmatullah, Hawla wa Lakwata, Ila Bilah, Ila Lazim. Madad, yes, I will say, Shabbat, and we say, Bismillah Rahman Rahim. We're asking support from our Sheikh, from the Holy Ones, from the Sultan al-Awliya, from our Holy Prophet والسلام, asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the support and the blessings that this association, uh, for this association, that we are here for the sake of Allah, not for the sake of dunya. Everyone can hear me in the back? Clearly, okay. You guys can hear me in the front? Okay, very good. You're going to get candy later, okay? If you hear very good, you're going to get candy. We're not going to give to the adults. We give only to the children. Children, they listen more than the adults sometimes. Dastur, asking his permission to say a couple of words, inshallah, that is going to give benefit to you and to me and to everyone present. We are here because we are very blessed. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us the singular blessing of gathering here, selecting us from billions of people, giving us the ni'mat of Islam. And the value uh, coming from the children of Adam and to be belonging to the ummat of the most holy beloved one, the holy prophet alayhi sallatu wa salam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said in the Quran al-Karim, وَلَكَدْ كَرَمْنَا بَنِي Adam, And we have honored the children of Adam. That has oceans of meaning. Allah did not honor the angels or the animals or anything else, but He has honored the children of Adam. And we are also blessed to be belonging to the nation of His most beloved one, alayhi sallatu wa salam. That we, as we said earlier, that even prophets, they were begging Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they say, take away this prophethood and this honor, Ya Rabbi. Make us just to be one normal member of the Ummah of the Holy Prophet, because they understood the value now. They understood the value and the honor that Allah has put to us, belonging to the nation of His most beloved one. This nation, out of 124,000 prophets, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not grant that wish, except for two. Isa alayhi salam, that we're waiting for him to return. Inshallah. And 
Nasruddin Hoja. Nasruddin Hoja, some of you may have heard him. Nasruddin Hoja, he was created in the Day of Promises as a prophet. But he wanted to be a normal member of this Ummah. And he's saying, Ya Rabbi, make me to become a regular, normal one, not a prophet. Take this honor from me. But I want to be one of the members of the Holy Prophet Salam's Ummah to take away their burdens. Let me to carry their burdens. Nasreddin Hoja, it is a big saint. It's a very high level saint. Some of you may have heard him. He makes jokes. He tells stories, teaching stories. And with those teaching stories of Islam, of yourself, of your Lord, uh, the jokes that he says, you listen and you laugh. And for that moment, all burdens, no matter what kind of burdens you're under, has been lifted from you for that moment. But Allah has blessed us, alhamdulillah, to be here, especially in this country, to show Islam, to show the real Islam. So many people may say, what is the real Islam? Islam is according to interpretation. You say, you say, you say. True, maybe. Everyone is saying there are so many different kinds of Islam. There is not so many different kinds of Islam. The questions that they raise about Islam, or the questions that they raise about the Ummat, or what we have gone through for 1400 years, has been raised before and has been answered. It is not just now that people are asking questions and the alims or the ulamas or people who are learning Islam, they don't know how to answer. It's been asked before. Holy Prophet said, Judaism, what has been revealed to the Bani Israel, the tribe, the Bani Israel, that religion will be divided into 71 different sects, 71 different groups. This is Hadith Sharif. One of them is on the right way. Seventy are in deviation. Then he said, the followers of Isa alayhi salam will be divided into 72 different groups. One of them is on the right way. Seventy-two of them, seventy-two groups, they're bounding to hellfire. Then they asked him, what about Islam, Ya Rasulullah? He's saying Islam will be divided into 73 groups. One of them will be in the Siratul Mustaqim, and 72 will be a deviation, bounding to hellfire. He did not stop there. He did not make a gap. He did not leave an empty space for thousands of years for the scholars and everyone to keep imagining, wondering why, what happened this, what happened, as had happened in the earlier revelations, that had happened in the earlier religion, so to speak. There's no earlier religion. There's only Islam, by the way. They asked him, which group is that, Ya Rasulullah? And he said, those are the ones who's following my sunnat. He did not stop there. Which today you will find that hadith in so many books, it's being snipped and edited too. It says, those who are following my sunnat and the sunnat of my sahabis and the sunnat of my companions. The understanding there is that there is a chain of protocol. There is a continuation. It's not only the sunnat of the sahabi kiram, but those who follow and those who follow, those who follow. And it continues up till today. Because today, if you ask 73 different groups, which there is more than 73, of course, everybody knows. Everybody is saying we're following Allah. Everyone will say we're following Holy Prophet, isn't it? From Wahhabis to Shias to Ahli Sunnah, whatever group that they may call themselves. But Holy Prophet is saying those who follow my way, my footsteps, and the footsteps of my Sahabi Kiram. Those who follow me, there is a chain. The chain, it is unbroken and it leads to me. The chain, it is not a Western understanding of a chain, a protocol that is going to take a long time to reach. It is not bureaucracy. It is not red tape. It is a live wire. 
a live wire that has been set for 1400 years. All you have to do, even if you're so far away, is to touch. Touch that live wire and you will receive that. Muslims, they're laying their own wires, trying to reach to Allah. I'm doing it by myself, subhanAllah. Then you belong to the other 72 groups. Are you following what Sahabi Kiram brought? Yes. Are you following what the Tabi'in brought, took from the Sahabi Kiram? It continues. It must continue. There must be a link. That is Islam. It must be a link. Otherwise, this group here, if there are 100 people, there may be 100 different opinions about something so simple. I may read a newspaper article, a short one, and I'll ask people to give a summary of what that article is. A hundred people, they may have a hundred different ideas. That is not what Islam brought. Islam brought unity. Islam brought unity. And Islam brought the peace that comes with the unity to know that yes, we are all here. And we are all equal as creatures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Of course, there are knowers above every knower. Definitely. Not everyone is going to be at the same level. We are at the same level of creation. We are not at the same level of taqwa. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, alhamdulillah, rabbil alameen, He has blessed us belonging to this nation and gathering us together in these very difficult times. In these times that the awliya Allah, the friends of Allah, they said, these are the times of the ahir, of the ahir zaman. This is the time of the end of days. Islam has never been apocalyptic like Christianity or Judaism, saying, world is going to end, world is going to end, world is going to end, world is going to end. No. Because Holy Prophet والسلام, he has brought enough knowledge to those who are receiving him and those who are receiving that training and those who are receiving those secrets to train them and to give them the knowledge that these are the signs that is going to point to the last days. For example, even on a Zahiri knowledge level, on an external book knowledge level that is open to everyone, they thought, for example, in the year 1000, that this is going to be Ahir Zaman, it's going to be Qiyamat. But the huge uh, king size uh, scholars at that time, who were also belonging to Tariqat, and they were also Awliya Allah, they said, no, it is not. But they said, but 500 years from now it will be. These are all different signs that Holy Prophet has given to us. That is the whole ocean there, about the knowledge of the Ahir Zaman. The reason for understanding the knowledge of the Ahir Zaman is not to put fear into our hearts or paranoia or anxiety because it doesn't matter if the world is going to continue one day or 1,000 years. We know as believers that we are a prisoner between two breaths. That our death may come at any moment. That in the tariqats in Turkey, for example, they say, when you go to sleep, understand that the angel of death is under your pillow. And when you wake up to understand that the angel of death is standing in front of you. And the remembrance of your death is not something that is what the West calls morbid. Because we understand this world is false. We want to return to the reality. We want to return to our home. Because we were not created here. We are not created for this dunya. We are not created to make this dunya into a paradise. We were created for paradise. We were from paradise. And that is our home. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent us here for a short period of time as a test. And He has sent 124,000 prophets to remind us. He has sent 104 books to remind us. He has sent thousands, millions of awliya Allah, His friends, to remind us. To remind us that this is not our home. To make us to have a longing for the home, our original home. And our original home is paradise. So everything that we are doing now has to remind us of death. Whether or not we believe this is Ahir Zaman, which only the foolish ones will not believe that this is the end of times. It's Ahir Zaman. Everywhere you hear, everywhere you see, 
Number one, we know that Allah is not pleased with us. Allah is not pleased with how mankind is going in the direction that it is going. The angels, they are not pleased with us. Because man has fallen into complete disobedience. The earth is not happy with us. The water is not happy with us. The skies, they are not happy with us. Because man has forgotten his compass, has forgotten his creator, and is entering into everything, thinking that he is the creator, and changing everything away from their orbit, from the fitrat, from the natural disposition. The reason of us understanding that this is Ahir Zaman is for us to come out from the fitna, from the confusion of Dajjal. We are here as believers. A believer, a believer uh, says that my faith is not enough. That my faith must grow every day. Because Holy Prophet is saying, a believer's today must be better than yesterday. And his tomorrow has to be better than today. It doesn't mean now that because we pray five times a day today, tomorrow we have to pray ten times. No. The believer must sit and must understand and must think why Allah has created us. What is our destination? What are we doing here? What are we saying? Why are we saying? Why are we doing? What is the direction? The believer must think. This is what is called tafakkur. This is what Western understanding, they're saying meditation. Yes, Holy Prophet wasalam, said, one hour of meditation is better than 70 years of worship. But it's not meditation as we understand to sit like this and like that and to chant. No, no, not that kind of meditation. To think, to understand, to sit, to put two and two together. Not to be in ghaflat, not to be in heedlessness. But to understand why this had happened to me. Why are certain things? What is Allah saying to me right now? Because Allah is closer to me than my jugular vein. He is continuously sending messages to me. Not only Allah, the angels are speaking to me. The prophets, they are speaking to me. The saints, they are speaking to me. What am I listening? Where are they speaking to? The center is here, the heart. If you put Allah there and His remembrance, the heart is like a radio station. If it's not tuned properly, you're going to hear a lot of static. You're going to hear something, but it's a lot of static. But in the static, you think Allah is saying something to you. You're going to go to the wrong direction. You think angels are saying something to you. You go to the wrong direction. You need to be able to adjust, or that has to be adjusted for you. The fitna of the Ahir Zaman, the confusion of the Ahir Zaman, is not something also that we can look down on and say that this is something that is trivial, this is small, it doesn't concern me. Because the fitna of the Ahir Zaman, the confusion of the Ahir Zaman, of the end of times, even Holy Prophet is saying, Ya Rabbi, protect me from that. Protect me from the fitna. And the Sahabi Kiram, they're saying, Holy Prophet was speaking so much about Dajjal that we thought he was hiding right behind us in the date palms, springing, coming at any minute. That was the urgency, that was the immediacy. That was 1400 years ago. Muslims, in the right way, they have kept that sense of urgency continuously for 1400 years. So, maybe a little bit of introduction to understand uh, who we are and where we're coming from. As most of you might have already known, you've known our brother Ahmad for some time and he has been following our Sheikh Sahib al Saif, Sheikh Abdul Karim al Kabrisi Rabbani for a number of years. But his heart was open and he was able to receive and pick up on so many things that it may have taken others years to pick up. Because the quality of the fire depends on the dryness of the wood. That much the wood is dry, that much a small spark will ignite. Then you will get somewhere. 
you will get somewhere. Again, the heart. The heart is open. We are following a tariqat. A tariqat is a way. Shariat is a way. Tariqat is a way. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said we have given the shariat and the tariqat. Yes, it is in the Quran. To us, to man. Today, in the Ahir Zaman, 1400 years after the passing of the Holy Prophet, والسلام, about 100 years after the passing of our Khalifa, the ruler of Islam, from east and west, north and south, that the Muslims at that time, they were all one ummah, they were not broken into different nationalities and nations and countries, each with their own laws and each with their own conflict. We were one. That you don't need a passport to travel from the Balkans to Indonesia, from the steppes of Russia all the way down to South Africa. You don't need because you're a Muslim. MashaAllah, Muslims say we want self-determination. We want to determine ourselves, not for Allah to determine our destiny, but we want to determine our own destiny that they've learned from here and there, picked up from the West. They've broken them up into different nationalities. And the first thing that happened to them was they started to crush each other. And they became, never in 1300 years, they were under the boots of unbelievers and they became under the boots of the unbelievers. For a few hundred years, they freed themselves from that. But the damage of that is continuing. It didn't stop with their so-called independence. Maybe it's going to take hundreds of years. Maybe it's never going to take anything for them to come out from that. So, the Holy Prophet والسلام, Fourteen hundred years ago, to some of his high-level Sahabi's companions, he has opened up for those whose hearts, like our brother Ahmad, they are dry and they are thirsty to find the reality, to look for al-haq. He has left ways, he says, for them to come closer to Allah. Thirteen years in Mecca, ten years in Medina, twenty-three years Holy Prophet Laysa to Asalam took. Twenty-three years Holy Prophet Laysa to Asalam took to establish Islam also as a ruling system, not only a personal religion, but as a ruling system. Forty ways, forty ways, forty tariqats. He transmitted to Hazrat Ali, Karamallah Wajha, his cousin and his son-in-law. And these are the ways that for those who want more, who are not just satisfied with saying shahadat, praying five times a day, fasting in the month of Ramadan, giving zakat, going to the hajj, they are thirsty and they want more. They want to understand what this reality is. They want to know their Lord. They have to know themselves. It's given 40 ways to Hazrat Ali to open up 40 different tariqas, turut. And these 40 ways of tariqat is still continuing up till today. And these are 40 main ways. That there are hundreds if not thousands of subdivisions coming. But everything is coming back to Hazrat Ali. And everything is coming back to the Holy Prophet. This is the chain that we were talking about earlier. This is the protocol that we are talking about earlier. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created means for us to know Him. If He wanted, He could not have sent us. He could not have sent us prophets. He could have just spoken to you directly, but He did not. He sent prophets. He sent 124,000 prophets. If He could, of course He could, but He did not. He did not send Qur'an Karim to each and every one of you. Each and every one of us, which today so many Muslims are saying, I can read the Quran, read the Quran, read the Quran, read the Quran. Just concentrate on the Quran, you'll find your way. Quran is a guide. But if you follow 
the Quran according to your own understanding, in which there is a hadith, Holy Prophet, etc. So I'm saying those who interpret the Quran according to their own understanding, their own nafs, prepare for hellfire. So those who are saying just concentrate on the Quran, but if their hearts are still dirty, if their ego is still running rampant, they're going to in interpret and understand the Quran in the wrong way. And instead of having unity, if there's a hundred people here, everyone will have a hundred different versions of the Quran. That is not unity. That is not Ummat. That is not Hilafat. That is not Tawheed. So everything else now, 40 different ways. Holy Prophet then transmitted to Hazrat Ali. Later on, inshallah, in a few minutes, we're going to have uh, Zikr. And in the Zikr, in the remembrance of Allah, Holy Prophet is saying, Ya Ali, come. They were sitting on their knees, facing each other. And Holy Prophet touched his knees to the knees of Hazrat Ali. And saying, repeat after me, Allah, Allah, Allah. And with each Allah, which is Zikr, Holy Prophet was sending the secrets into the person of Hazrat Ali. And Hazrat Ali started shaking, started shaking started boiling. It's not normal things that we're talking about. It is heavenly things that we are speaking about. So many people say, today, I see this angel, I see that angel. Understand, when Holy Prophet, والسلام, the reason for everything to be created, when he saw Hazrat Jibril, he got sick. He got sick. Holy Prophet got sick. But today's people, they're following also Christians saying, oh, I see this angel. This angel speak to me. I see this angel. So easy. Hmm. Wrong direction. So Holy Prophet ﷺ gave the secrets then to those ones whose hearts are thirsty to find Allah. Hazrat Ali was young. He was a different uh, person. His body started shaking one day soon he came to the Holy Prophet after that saying that Ya Rasulullah I cannot hold this secret inside of me anymore I have to speak it otherwise I'm going to kill myself Holy Prophet says go to the mountains then speak this make sure there is nobody around speak he went there and he did nobody heard the secrets because in that secret is also the Ismul Azam the greatest name of Allah Except for two creatures, two things that hurt. We're not going to touch that right now. Then Holy Prophet says, Ya Abu Bakr, come. Hazrat Abu Bakr was about the same age as the Prophet, give or take a few months, a few years. They sat face to face, their knees are touching each other. And Holy Prophet says, Repeat after me, Allah, Allah, Allah. Hazrat Abu Bakr then started repeating. Holy Prophet started giving. Hazrat Abu Bakr received. More Holy Prophet poured, more he received. More he received, more he became more stable, more solid like a mountain. He started to anchor himself stronger and stronger. Then Holy Prophet emptied himself. If it's possible for Holy Prophet to empty himself, he did. Into Hazrat Abu Bakr. Which is why Holy Prophet is saying, whatever Allah has given me, I pour it into the heart of Hazrat Abu Bakr. And from Hazrat Abu Bakr, one way came. Hazrat Ali, 40 ways came. Hazrat Abu Bakr, one way came. The end of their ways is the beginning of ours. There's 40 tariqats amongst them. All of them, they're on top of our heads. There is no argument. There is no fighting. Only foolish ones, egoistic ones in this Ahir of Ahir Zaman, they start fighting. Say, no, this is how, what concern is you know there is a hierarchy, stick to it. You have a sheh, good. You must believe in that sheh and follow him because he is representing that holy prophet, it doesn't matter. Don't go everywhere else. But if they are everywhere else, they're saying, come and make a zikr to remember Allah. Don't be a tyrant now and say, no, I'm only going to go to my sheh's place, not to yours. We're remembering Allah. Allah, Allah. Don't you know every masjid now, they forbid the zikr, isn't it? 
the Wahhabis completely take over. They say it's bid'ah, brother, it's bid'ah. Shifr, shirk, haram to make. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying in the Holy Quran, who is more tyrant than that one who has forbidden the remembrance of Allah in the masjid? Open ayat. Muslim sleeping. So, 40 tariqats to Hazrat Ali, one tariqat to Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq. And that is the Naqshbandi tariqat. The name changed. During the time of Hazrat Abu Bakr, is known as Siddiqiyah. Then it changed, it was passed, the secret is then passed to Hazrat Salman al Farsi, Salmaniyah. Then it changed, it passed, it passed. It passed to Jafar al Saddiq. Radiallahu and Now taking from both sides, from Hazrat Abu Bakr's side and from Hazrat Ali's side. And that continues up till today. Unbroken chain, unbroken lineage. And the 40th uh, Grand Master, Sultan al Awliya, is our Sultan, Shaykh Muhammad Nazim Adil al Haqqani. Yes, so many things we are not aware of. But the believer or the intelligent person must not say, just because I'm not aware of it doesn't mean that it doesn't exist, it doesn't mean that it is not there. It doesn't mean that it is wrong. Or another foolishness that we hear. Well, everybody is saying something. I don't know what it is, so I'm just going to stay out of it. Yahoo, I never hear someone who's hungry and they go into a restaurant and say, I don't, there's so many things on the menu. I don't know which one it is. I'm going to stay hungry now. No, you're going to take something. You're going to try it out. Then when it comes to this, because it fits the ego, because the way of religion, the way of haq, the way of tariqat, it is not easy. It is not supposed to be easy. Because our role model is the Holy Prophet, like said to us, his life was not easy. Our role models are the Sahabi Kiram, their lives are not easy. Our role models are the Tabi'in, Tabi, Tabi'in, Awliyaullah, their lives are not easy. But Allah is happy with them and they are happy with Allah. Because they understood the falseness of this world. And they have already made a connection to the afterworld. They've already made a connection to the paradises. They've already made a connection to their Lord and they cannot wait to meet their Lord. They have died before they died. We are wearing a turban. <laughs> this turban, other than being a big sunnah of the Holy Prophet, it is a crown of a believer. Yes. Women, they're wearing hijab. Men's hijab, in reality, is the beard. But for 1300 years, until the last century, if you're a Muslim man especially, you have to wear a turban. Because it's what the Holy Prophet wore. It is what the angels they were wearing. When Hazrat Jibril alayhi salam, he came in the guise of a man into the presence of the Holy Prophet alayhi salatu salam, he came wearing a jubba, wearing a turban, carrying a cane with a full beard. He did not come with a goatee, shaved, wearing a shawl, wearing white. Somebody came like that to the presence of the Prophet alayhi salatu salam. It was not Jibril alayhi salam, it was shaitan. So we need to follow a certain lifestyle. Lifestyle is everything. Lifestyle is not a separation. Islam is a lifestyle. As much as we can, like I said before, we're not turning back the clocks. We have to match certain things. We have to mediate certain things. Certain things have to be balanced for us to live. We, are, we don't like technology so much because it's brought so much evil, but we're using it. But we're not depending on it, we're not loving it, and we're not worshipping to it. But we're using it, correct? So, at the same time, we cannot say now that if there is no technology, Islam is not going to spread. People say, oh, because of technology, Islam... No, it is not that. Hazrat Ibn Abbas, the uncle of the Holy Prophet, said to us, Salam, one person, without knowing the language, went to Central Asia on a horse. One person. And he didn't go to some tropical island where everybody's receiving him. Central Asia, are we understanding who was living there at that time, how tough and rough they were. With the light of the Holy Prophet, he made the entire region to accept Islam. Because he was carrying the light of Islam. He was not carrying books. He was not carrying a laptop. He was not on Facebook. He was not making fatwas. He was not involved in Malayani. It's inside of him. The nur is inside of him. And when he started walking, they say, this is an unusual man. When he started praying, they say, this is completely otherwise from this world.
Then they say, let us sit and think and understand. And because those ones in the past, they are more intelligent than us. Because they are ummi. They are illiterate. They are not stubborn. Something they don't understand, they say, let's try it out. Okay, it's good for now. Let's take it. They're not saying, no. What do you have in replace of that? Worse, doesn't matter. I like it because it's my choice. That is all ego. And the purpose of tariqat, the purpose of these ways leading back to the Holy Prophet, والسلام, again, it is not, <laughs> it is not to be unveiled and to witness endless horizons. It is not to understand the alam malakut. It is not to, no, 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 no. All those are games. Believe me, those are still games. Our aim is Allah. Our aim is Allah. And our prize is to be Abdullah. Holy Prophet said to us, he has titles and he has names. It's uncountable. And they said, Ya Rasulullah, which one is your most favorite one? Which one do you like best? He says, Abdullah. To be the servant of Allah. What higher title is that? What more beautiful title is that? When Allah is saying, this is my servant. When Allah is saying, this is my servant. That one in reality is a sultan. Because that servant now says, it doesn't matter, Ya Sultan. Whether you're giving me a rose or the thorn of a rose, it is coming from you. It is the same. We check ourselves. We only want roses. We only want good times. When something is hitting us, where are we? Are we complaining? So the way of Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu an is continuing. Awliya Allah, the friends of Allah, there are numerous hadiths to that also, but we cannot even talk about it right now. So many people, they're not accepting hadith. What can we say? Ahir Zaman, this is one of the signs of the end of times. Hmm? They say this hadith is Garib, this hadith Hasan. This hadith is this, this hadith is that, this hadith is forged. I read somewhere, we just, for example, had the Ashura, uh, two days ago, commemorating so many events that happened in Islam. Like Adam alayhi salam being forgiven on the day of Ashura. Nuh alayhi salam, his ship landed and forgiveness was given to the nation. Of Adam alayhi salam, his nation, that's why he's also called the second Adam, on the day of Ashura. The day of Ashura, Idris alayhi salam, he was forgiven. The day of Ashura, Sulaiman alayhi salam, his kingdom was restored to him. Daud alayhi salam was forgiven. Musa alayhi salam, his nation was given deliverance. Isa alayhi salam, he was taken body and spirit to the first paradise on the day of Ashura. And the grandson of the Holy Prophet, alayhi salatu salam, Hazrati. Hussein radiallahu an and 72, 73 of his members of his family and other ones, they were massacred. The day of Ashura. Who remembers? But Muslims, I'm seeing Wahhabis, Sufis, Sunnis, doesn't matter. They're fighting tooth and nails now. No, I have to celebrate Thanksgiving. How do you like that? Now, understand. We're not going to enter into that so much now. But just to understand. Now, this day of Ashura, is it not a big day in Islam? It is huge. Tariqats, they are holding on to these days too. We are not celebrating Ashura also the way that the Shias are celebrating. Don't get it wrong. Don't be lazy in your logic too. Well, we're not going to celebrate because we're not Shia. You have to be Shia to understand that Hazrat Hussein, he was massacred for us. He was standing for Haq. No. So don't be talking out of your elbow. Okay? With those things like that. But we are commemorating and we are understanding. And we're asking Allah for forgiveness and to learn from what has happened. Because they died. They were shaheed for us. 
We don't go beating ourselves up. We don't go cutting ourselves up. We don't go crying and being emotional. Then after that, we leave everything and forget about everything again. We don't put curses on people thinking that we are so high. Huh. Tariqat, Tasawuf is teaching you that your ego, yours and mine, it is worse than shaitan. It is worse than Abu Jahil. It is worse than Firaun. It is worse than Nimrud. Yes, Iwan Islam. Our guide is Holy Prophet, and this is what he's teaching, that the high-level Sahabis, the sacrifice is the ego. Understanding yourself, you have to understand your ego. Only by understanding yourself and knowing yourself, that time you will know your Lord. If you don't know your Lord, you will not be able to worship Him. So many people going up and down, it doesn't mean that you are worshipping Him. If you don't know your Lord, you cannot worship Him. But if you don't know yourself, you will never know your Lord. Holy Prophet is saying, He who doesn't know himself does not know his Lord. These are the words of Habibullah. Tariqat is teaching you exactly that. Nothing else. Nothing else. Once you understand, then you're going to that time when you stand and you say Allahu Akbar, you're going to mean Allahu Akbar. That time when you make the sajda, the sujood, you're going to mean the sujood. Your heart is not going to be thinking, what should I cook, what should I wear, this, this. Your heart is not going to circle around. It is not praying. It is not that. It is not even making so much a zikr. It is not that. Everything is supposed to polish your heart. If the praying and the shahadat and the Ramazan and the Hajj is not changing you from your wrong characteristics into better characteristics, from a nafsu amara to nafsu mutma'in that the Holy Quran is saying, if it's not changing, what good is it? And we have seen in Islamic history so many have come who have worshipped more than us than we can ever do in our own lifetime and they've deviated. The troops that came to massacre Hazrat Hussein, they said, quickly kill all of them. Kill all these grandchildren of the Holy Prophet because we are missing Zuhr. Are we understanding? Are we understanding the value? So, now look at Ashura and look at Thanksgiving. Come on now. Let's be real. Okay, you want to eat turkey? Eat turkey any day, but come on. Don't say. Nobody can say it's more important than Ashura. Maybe we don't know. It's okay if we don't know. But don't be arrogant and ignorant and blind and stubborn to be insisting in the wrong way. Tariqat. Especially the Naqshbandi Tariqat. Teaching you to know yourself. Four enemies. Not five. Four enemies. The enemies of man. Shaitan. The dunya. Nafs. And Yahweh. Shaitan. That shaitan that was known as Azazil, he was not an angel, he was a jinn. He was named Azazil because he worshipped too much, a lot. That there is not a space in this world. He was created before we were physically created. We were created before that. We are a hidden treasure. I'm not going to get into that too much now. But he was created and he was sent to the world. And he was worshipping. He was worshipping so much that our peer, Hazrati Shah Naqshbandi, is saying, if I can find a handful of earth that Shaitan did not put his forehead, his sajda, worshipping Allah, I would have saved the entire ummah of Muhammad. Shaitan, every space in this world, in this earth, he put his forehead worshipping Allah. Because of that worship, his station was raised. He got higher. Physically, he was lifted higher too, to the first paradises. He worshipped in the first paradise. Some say for 40,000 years. Doesn't matter. 70,000 years. 
we don't even understand what that means. He worshipped. He worshipped on every level of paradise. He had so much knowledge that the angels were coming to him and asking him. When Adam alayhi salam, he was created, his physical form was created. They were asking him, Ya Zazil, what is this? Who is this? But Azazil became shaitan. He was worshipping. He was not worshipping for the sake of Allah. Because he saw the Maqam al-Mahmud, that the most praised station that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created. And he wanted that most praised station, the nearest station to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He wanted that station for himself. He prayed for that station. So don't think we're better than him. How many of us praying for less than that? That Hazrat Rabia Dadawiyah is saying, she came out of a house one day, carrying one torch, fire, carrying a bucket of water, looking around with very jalal for a woman. They're saying, Ya Rabia, where are you going with that fire and that water? He says, I want to burn the paradise. And what are you doing with that water? I want to put out the fires of hell. They say, Ya Rabia, why are you saying this? Because to say that, of course, it's kufr. Yeah? She says, because they only worship Allah to go to paradise. And they only worship Allah because they don't want to go to hell. Because they don't worship Allah because He is Allah, because He deserves to be worshipped for His love. Tariqat is to teach us that. Forget about paradise or hell. This world, we're worshipping for that. We are not out of it. So Shaitan did that. He was worshipping. He was aiming for that Maqam al Mahmud. But when he saw Adam alayhi salam's form, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has never before created a form like this, taking clay from the earth, mixing it up all the different colors, and with his holy hands, not physical hands, we are not Wahhabis to say Allah is standing, sitting, and, eh, but with this, the way that in our language, but not literally, in his holy hands, he shaped the form of Adam alayhi salam before he blew one holy breath. Not from himself, because Allah is indivisible. If he's blowing from himself, then Adam alayhi can also say, I'm also part of divinity. That we can also claim we are part of Allah. Then that time we have lost our faith. Because Allah is one. We are creatures. We will enter that later, a little bit. What it means to enter into the ocean. Shaitan then, went into the mouth of Adam alayhi salam and started circling, physical body. Circling, circling through all the veins. As the Holy Prophet salam, is saying, shaitan runs in the course of the man's veins. And with the zikr, we try to expel that. So many other things. So the lifestyle, we try to take it out. Shaitan is inside of you, you and me. He came out and says, there's nothing there, saying to the angels. Not all angels. Not the archangels, not the near ones, other angels. This is nothing. This is made from clay, or made from fire. And he's saying, definitely, knowing by himself, this is meant for that Maqam al Mahmud. I missed it. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put his holy breath, to Adam alayhi salam. Adam alayhi salam opened his eyes and he sneezed. First thing that he did. He sneezed and then he said, Alhamdulillah. First word that he said. He sneezed. His life came out and it came back again to him. That's why he said, Alhamdulillah, which today's science discovered that whenever, every time you sneeze, your heart stops. That's why we say Alhamdulillah. So many traditions of Islam we've lost. So, Shaitan then saw Adam alayhi salam. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is commanding the angels, not only the angels, but the entire creation, to make sujud, to make sajda to Adam alayhi salam, 
is saying no, I will not. Why he said I will not? Yes, he is proud. He is saying this one is made from clay. I am made from fire. But he also understood the secret is not in the material being. It is in the spirit. He understood that. But he says, if I make sajda, then I have to obey. I have to obey. I have to submit. Allah is saying, make sajda to this one. Adam alayhi salam says, no, I only make sajda to you, not to this one. Astaghfirullah, shirik. <laughs> so many saying that now, isn't it? So many saying, everything is shirik, everything is shirik. You are shirik. If you don't understand that you're a creature that does not exist, you're committing a shirik. You're committing partnership. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when He created the spirit, He says, Who are you and who am I? And our spirit says, You are my creator and my Lord and I am your servant and I love you and I ask help only from you. But when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls the nafs that is in you and me, saying, Who are you and who am I? Our nafs says, You are you and I am me. You exist and I exist. You are Allah, I am Allah. It's inside of you and me. That's why it has the will to go against to Allah. Nothing in creation is disobeying Allah except for man. So this ego, this ego that we're saying is 70 times stronger than shaitan, is a second enemy that you have to know in order to understand Allah, to understand yourself. It's a long journey ahead. How are the desires then? The world, this dunya. Concentrating on that with a guide, and the guide will make you understand what is for you for this time in your life. You are created unique. Never before Allah has created someone like you. Never again Allah will create someone like you. And Allah has created you with love. And Allah is saying, come back to me. Allah is saying, come back to me. You think when Allah on the day of promises, He says, Allah stu bi rabbikum, am I not your Lord? And we say, yes, you are our Lord. You think Allah said one time? Allah is continuously saying, am I not your Lord? Am I not your Lord? How are we replying? Are we even hearing? The signs, they are everywhere. The signs of Allah, they are everywhere. Tariqat teaches you that. Our Shaykh is teaching us that. We fall short, of course. We are weak, of course. We are very dirty creatures, of course. But Allah is saying, take one step to me and I will take ten steps towards you. Allah is saying, if you come to me walking, I'll come to you running. What do we have to do to put Allah into our hearts? Inshallah, in a nutshell, that is what tariqat is, in a nutshell, this is just nothing from the oceans of our Shaykh that we are learning and we're finding benefit and we're finding the taste of Islam, we're finding the taste of the Holy Prophet wasalam. that time it doesn't matter what you wear, how you are, how much knowledge you have, it's not how much Arabic you know, it's not how much you recite, it's how much sincerity you have in your heart, how much you put Allah and His Prophet in your heart. Of course you need to know Arabic to pray, and do, but so many Jews and Christians, they know Arabic too, it didn't enter into their heart. Islam is not there. The killers of Yazid, they know Arabic more than anyone else. It did not enter into their heart. What we want is a clean heart. What we want is a heart that has faith. And the tariqat, step by step, our Shaykh is teaching us how to taste that, then how to bear the burdens of this world. Looking as our role model, the Holy Prophet wasalam, his sahabe kiram, the awliya Allah and our Shaykh. Because prophets, they come and they go, but Allah is kerim. Whatever He has given, He never takes back. 
124,000 prophets came. The maqam of those prophets, they are still here. The prophets, they are not here. But those maqams are filled always, always, always by 124,000 men and women occupying that station, representing that prophet. They are not prophets, but they have that station and they have the blessings. And they are pulling people together to Allah. There is one man alive, one person who is representing Hazrat Adam alayhi salam. One person representing Hazrat Musa. One person representing Hazrat Isa. Sultan al Awliya, Shaykh Muhammad Nazim al Haqqani, is a Sultan al Awliya representing the Holy Prophet. Whether you believe or not, it doesn't change the reality. In these days, they've all pulled themselves away anyway because the Muslim Ummah say, We don't want Shariat, we don't want Islam, we don't want Halifa, we want everything else. And we're calling ourselves a Muslim. Coming, sneaking into the masjid, praying a couple of rakats and saying that this is a Juma. Hmm? Coming to Masjid, quickly praying, and saying that we're praying. No, it, Islam, it is a lifestyle. Once you start walking in the footsteps of the Prophet, you will start to taste the faith. That faith is necessary. It's especially necessary in these times, because everything else is designed to take away that faith from us. This is the fitna of that jal that we are talking about, that we have to prepare ourselves for. No. The world outside is not a paradise. You have to be completely living in the moon on Mars to understand that. Don't you know? Every politician, every world leader is barking. They are the dogs of war. They've released that already. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also has plans. They think they have plans, but Allah also has plans. And Allah's plans will prevail, inshallah rahman. Our Responsibility is to aim for that title. The only title is Abdullah. The only title is to be a servant of Allah. To understand that title of Abdullah, to be able to gain it, we have to know ourselves and the enemies. The other four characteristics that we have inherited from shaitan, anger, stubbornness, Jealousy and arrogance. Four. That thousands of subdivisions come from that. Tariqat is teaching you how to understand, how to recognize that, how to step on your ego. That time, with the faith that you have, whatever devotions, whatever worship that you have, it will reach. It will reach. It is not how much book knowledge you have, but how clean your heart is, it will reach. Never forget, Holy Prophet said to us, he was an ummi. He was an illiterate. When Hazrat Jibril alayhi salam came and said to him, read. He didn't have a mushaf under him to say, open it up and read. Read. Read what is in your heart. That commandment, that order is still continuing. Allah. The sheikhs, they're telling us, read what is in our heart. Take every ilah, everything that we are worshipping away. Put Allah. The Holy Prophet is saying, shirk, hidden shirk. It is harder to detect than a black ant crawling on a black rock in the darkest part of the night. The anger, stubbornness, jealousy, and the arrogance, these are the characteristics of shaitan. And these are the characteristics of shaitan that can make us to commit the shirk. Yes. Shaitan did not commit shirk. He recognized there is still Allah. Our egos not only declare that there is more than one Allah, our ego is declaring that we are Allah. Once we understand that and we pull it out, we pull out this hidden, hiddenness that is inside of us, that time we can clean. 
the time our prayers, yes. The ego is not meant for us to be annihilating it. It's not annihilation of the ego. We're not Buddhists. To be sitting there like zombies, not feeling anything. I'm nothing, everything is nothing, nothing is nothing. <laughs> Foolish ones. It is not that. To understand that time when you're stepping on your ego, that ego that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has also given the strength to rise up against him, that ego then becomes a vehicle. It becomes a means of transportation that is going to give us a strength to make the miraj. Inshallah, Rahman, we're going to pray soon. Prayer is supposed to be the miraj of the believers, correct? Holy Prophet is saying, huh, miraj, we're just staring at a carpet. What miraj? But there are ways. There are ways to do that. That doesn't concern us too. It's not to see things. It's not. Understand also, please. The miraj of the Holy Prophet, said to Islam, he wasn't there for a vacation. He was under extreme test. Every step of the way he saw and every step of the way there was a test that was given to him and he passed for our sake, not for his. He has already passed. But that is the Habibullah that when he was born, he's saying, Ashhadu wa la ilaha illallah and I am Rasulullah. Ummati, Ummati, calling us, my nation, my nation. The first words that came out from him when he was a baby, that one that he was sitting in the cradle and he was playing with the moon with his fingers. That one that the fish, a huge fish that don't believe the scientists saying we discovered everything. They never discovered nothing yet in this world. Now they're going up to the skies. They know nothing. Awliya Allah, the Awliya Allah living right now in the bottom of the ocean making zikr of Allah and understanding what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created in this world that is the lowest of the world. That huge fish that was so overcome with emotion because the Holy Prophet was born that he started crying and the world <laughs> started jumping up and down. And when he passed, Holy Prophet is saying, Ummati, Ummati. And when he's raised on the day of judgment, he's saying, O oh my nation, O oh my nation, what are we crying for when we go to sleep? What are we crying for when we're there in sajda? What are we crying for when we open our hands for supplication? What are we crying for when we go to the hajj? What are we crying for asking Allah when we die? Inshallah, it will be the shahadat. But don't think that time is just because some parent is repeating shahadat and you're going to say, whatever is in your heart, you're going to say, put Allah in our hearts. That is advice, not advice. Prophets, they give advice. Deen in nasihat. The religion, it is advice. And as Shahi Naqshbandi is saying, prophets, they give advice. We are not prophets. We do not give advice. We give sohbet, association. But through sohbet, you become a sahabi. You become a sahaba. You become a companion. Sure, then he gives sohbet. I'm just talking a little bit, listening to see what he's sending. If it's something that is useful for you, take it. If you don't like it, leave it. It's okay. I'll take it because I need it. But understand, it is for the sake of the believers that Allah is still sending rahmat to the whole world. It is for the sake of the believers that Allah is still sending rain to this whole world, to the unbelievers, to the enemies of Islam, to everyone. Because of one holy association, one association that you're making a zikr and you're remembering Allah wholly for the, solely for the purpose of Allah. 70,000 wrong associations in the area, their sins are forgiven because of that one association. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, I swear by my majesty, I'm shy to punish them. Allah is saying, there was one servant of Allah that he was not being a good servant. He was being punished heavily in the grave, which so many Muslims are not even believing in the punishment of the grave these days. But one day that saint dreamt him and he was taken out from the punishment of the grave and he was in a waiting area, I was saying the VIP lounge, okay? A precursor to paradise, to give him a taste of that paradise that is destined for him. Why? Because that time his son grew up like these small ones. They grew up and they learned and they went to school. And the first word that they learned was Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. 
and Allah is swearing by my might and majesty, I will not punish that servant because his son is saying in my name. Uh, zikr, it is important. Remembrance of Allah it is the key to every worship and every ibadat. You can make the worship and the ibadat, but if you don't remember Allah, you've taken the life out of it. Inshallah Rahman, may these words bring some benefit to you and to me. I don't know if it's going to give benefit to you, but to me, it is. I'm going to take it, inshallah. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. I'm not responsible to know every answer. I can tell you, I don't know. It's okay. But either say something that is going to benefit you and others, or else keep silent. This is advice from the Holy Prophet, let's say, to salam. Yamin Allah tafik. So many other things that we can talk about. But this is enough, I think, to lay the ground. Subhanallah, it's 8 o'clock. I talk too much. But Alhamdulillah, we know, we understand, especially our guys, that Sheikh Effendi is here. Because we are entering a time inside of time, in a place inside of a place. We're not understanding what the time is uh, sitting in his association. Alhamdulillah. Astaghfirullah. May Allah forgive me and bless all of you for the sake of the Holy Prophet, والسلام, for the sake of our Shaykh, Al Fatiha. Amen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Inshallah, Rahman. This is what we're doing every Thursday night especially in our association and every Friday night that we go somewhere else to have another association a sohbet, zikr, prayers, we sit and we eat every week we make thanksgiving Islamic way Islamic thanksgiving is not to eat turkey Islamic thanksgiving is to feed others start feeding others blessings will come so much prayers you're making, it may not be accepted because we know where our hearts are when we're praying. But one good action that we're doing for the sake of Allah, Allah may accept it, inshallah, Rahman. This is what we're doing. This is nothing special. So now in accordance to the way that we've been doing it, Alhamdulillah, with the way that Sahib Saif, our Shaykh, has been doing it, and the way Sultan al awliya is doing, and the way that has been done for 1400 years, inshallah, we'll sit and make the zikr. Uh, if you like, make the zikr with us. If you don't like, then it's a free country. It's okay. But we're not doing anything wrong. So, suit yourself. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. You can make a small circle. The kids, you can be uh, uh, okay now, jumping up and down in the corner over there, okay? You're being very good because so bad, we have to be quiet a little bit. But zikr, you can do whatever you want to do. If you want to make zikr, it's good too. Okay? Okay, go sit over there. Go sit over there. Western American style, I'm sitting over here, don't you touch me. You sit over there, you sit around. The energy is passing through, so many things happening, correct? It must be. Auzubillah min shaitan rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Astaghfirullah alazim wa atubu ilayh. Auzubillah min shaitan rajim, bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. This is the loud zikr of the Naqshbandi order. 
Uh, we make loud zikr. We also do a silent zikr, a secret zikr. Uh, that one we're doing every day with a big tasbih we're pulling. This is a loud zikr. We're doing both. Alhamdulillah. It's necessary for these times also. People are also saying, why we have pictures of our share? Yeah, you have pictures of so many other foolish people that you're seeing every day, everywhere. Just remind you other than Allah. And you're not going to look at a picture of someone who's going to remind you of Allah. Yeah, what kind of logic you have that time. <laughs> Correct. They say no picture is haram, but they have television in front of them, moving pictures. They're seeing for hours, sitting there, being programmed. Huh. Intelligence. You have to have intelligence. Islam must bring you intelligence. Tariqat must teach you how to deal with the times. How to deal with the times. Not to be a slave to the times. How to deal with it. How to balance things. How to put proper intentions. Then that time you take one step, Allah will come running to you. Inshallah, Rahman. Our aim is to be Abdullah. May Allah forgive us and accept our prayers. There's no guarantee. This is the zikr that we're doing. The first zikr that Holy Prophet did when he made the immigration from Mecca to Medina, the Hijrat, and he went the opposite direction instead of a straight road to Medina. He went to a longer route for a different reason. He went to the cave. What is the cave's name? Thawr. Good. Thawr. At least some people know. Thawr. Which today, these shaitan Wahhabis, they are throwing rubbish inside and garbage inside and they are blocking it. They are saying it's shirk to go there. <laughs> to them. Their time is coming down too. But Muslims are sleeping. Uh, Muslims are getting up and down, jumping up and down and destroying everything to say, why are you making cartoon about our Prophet? Why are you making film about our Prophet? But right now the Wahhabis, they are planning to destroy the tomb of the Prophet, and we're busy eating turkey. <laughs> Believer must not be heedless, must understand. What can we do? We can pray. You're saying, what can we do? We cannot do anything. You're lazy then. You're not thinking as a believer. You pray. You don't believe in prayer? then I cannot help you. And so, in that cave with Hazrat Abu Bakr, they entered and they made the first zikr there. And that time, the secrets of the Naqshbandi order is passed also to the Holy, to Hazrat Abu Bakr and in the presence of the Holy Prophet wasalam, Before that, when they enter, Hazrat Abu Bakr was anxious, he was nervous. It's a small cave, correct? It's very small, you have to crawl inside. And it's so open that if somebody just come down and look, he knows that there's somebody there. Allah then made the uh, spider to spin a web, correct? And the pigeons, the doves to lay their uh, eggs there to make it so that it covers up a little bit, but it's nothing. But of course, there is live wire there in that spider. If they touch it, they're all going to be electrocuted. <laughs> but Hazrat Abu Bakr was very nervous. Holy Prophet is saying, What is troubling you, Ya Abu Bakr? He's saying, I love you so much. I know I cannot protect you. If they come, as Holy Prophet is saying, Ya Abu Bakr, don't worry. If they come from here, we go out from here. And he turned and he touched, and the entire back wall disappeared, and they see an endless ocean. And Holy Prophet Islam slept for a while on the thigh of Hazrat Abu Bakr. Understand now, understand, put yourself in that situation. These stories are not for nothing. You're running away from people who are killing you with this. Habibullah, that you love, that you're willing to sacrifice for anything, he goes the opposite direction. He goes into a small cave and he starts to sleep. Understand now. Then, after a while, Hazrat Abu Bakr started crying. And tears fell on the face of Hazrat Peygamber Effendi And Holy Prophet woke up. And Holy Prophet said, Ya Abu Bakr, why are you crying? As Tia Abu Bakr is saying, he's crying because there was a hole in the cave and there was a snake that was living inside. And he was 
with his toes. He was blocking that hole so the snake doesn't come out to bite the Holy Prophet. But the snake was biting his foot and he did not move. This is real. This is not a story. This is real. Because of that, he started crying. That was when Holy Prophet was saying, we escaped from there. But that snake too, he had rights. He's been waiting since the day of creation to see the Holy Prophet. And he's saying, why are you blocking my food? Yes, and then Holy Prophet saying to the snake, don't you know the flesh of my siddiqs is forbidden to you? Those ones following the way of Siddiq al-Akbar, it is forbidden, the punishment of the grave. Inshallah, we're worthy of that. We're so far away from them. So then he made the zikr because it's a promise. The big job that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave to the Holy Prophet. Can you all hear me? Uh, why are you not saying something? <laughs> I'm so caught up. We're all there. Huh? <laughs> then, I don't want to use that. Then, If you missed that part, then when they upload it, you can <laughs> forward to that part and you can listen. <laughs> but we're talking when Holy Prophet was in the cave of Thawr with Hazrat Abu Bakr. And they were there for the reason of the first zikr, the zikr that we're doing right now. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed then to the Holy Prophet and Hazrat Abu Bakr the Ummat, his Ummat, they were most beautiful, which I forgot to mention, one of the reasons why Shaitan refused to make sajda, then he have to follow and obey Adam alayhi salam, he has to take a share, but it is not Adam alayhi salam, all of us were in Adam alayhi salam, understand that more importantly, the light of the Holy Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam was in Hazrat Adam, understand? That Maqam al Mahmud is for Holy Prophet. So, that jealousy, that rivalry began from that time. The enemy of man began from that time. So, we have to understand our enemies inside and out. Otherwise, you'll be blind. You, otherwise, you'll be blind. Can you hear me now? <laughs> otherwise, we can be blind. So, yeah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showed the spiritual presence of the Ummat from the time of Adam alayhi salam all of mankind but specifically he's showing the Ummat of the Holy Prophet alayhi only at that time and he's showing the beauty of that Ummat and the high honor because Allah has blessed yes Adam. but specifically the blessings that he's shown to the nation of the Prophet alayhi he's showing to the Prophet to Hazrat Abu Bakr and Holy Prophet was very happy he was overjoyed because his entire mission is for his ummah. Then Allah shows with the disobedience, with the mistakes, with all the wrong intentions and wrong deeds that this ummah committed from all that bright, beautiful light, it turned very ugly. And holy prophets start to get sad. Then Allah is saying, don't worry, we will send help to you. Because your responsibility is to return this ummah to me in the way that I created them, clean and pure. Holy Prophet is saying, Ya Rabbi, this task is too much, it's too great for me. He says, don't worry, I will send you help. And he sent the awliya Allah, especially of this order. And from that time, they called upon the spirits of the shaykhs of the Naqshban, the order, and all of their followers, and everyone who has even sat for one zikr of the Naqshban, the order, in that cave. We were there. We were there. We were there. We were there in the day of promises. Do we remember? Come to Tariqat. We'll teach you how to remember, if it is necessary for us, to go back to understand where we were. We were a hidden treasure. And then they started the zikr. And that is a zikr that was also led by Abdul Khalid Guchawani, one of our grand sheikhs. And that is a zikr that we're continuing. It's called the Hatm Khwajagan. There are different ways of remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is one way. 
You may stand and you may jump up and down to remember Allah. It is permissible. Sahabi Kiram had done that also. It is permissible. You may turn to remember Allah. That is also permissible. Because Hazrat Abu Bakr did that. So many other things that they're saying, bid'ah, 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 they have no knowledge because their lives are filled with bid'ah. But everything can be traced back. Remembrance of Allah, sitting, standing, lying. Endless ways. This is one way. Inshallah Rahman, that's what we are attempting to do. In the zikr of Allah, the shaykh will bring us somewhere. As much as you are connecting to the shaykh, it will make you to forget your false self and to connect to your true self. This is a zikr. That's why we're turning down the lights in remembrance and also the secret of that cave, the zikr that we had in the cave. To pull back into your own caves and to remember your Lord that way. This is not the zikr, although this is a loud zikr for people to be looking around. Uh, mashallah, you have good adab. This is proper adab. Everything there's an adab. There's a protocol, there's a way of doing it. Good, a certain way of sitting and everything, but it doesn't matter too much now. And in that remembrance, inshallah Rahman, we hope to be able to worship Allah and give the highest praises to the Holy Prophet. Right now that we are doing it, the 70,000 wrong associations out there that they're committing on this night, that people are drinking, doing drugs, doing everything, they are forgiven because of the sake of the remembrance of Allah that is happening here. We are preparing to make zikr. Don't think we are the only ones. Well, how many people are here? 100? Don't think there are 100. There are countless creatures that are in here, servants of Allah, that they are in here. And they are going around informing all their friends too to say, come. There is a circle of remembrance, come. And the angels, they come. And they surround this circle with their wings of mercy up to Sidratul Muntaha. And if you have these, these eyes, you will see a light that is reaching from here to there. This is Hadith Qudsi. This is not somebody writing something because he interprets it to be something. This is Hadith Qudsi. Muslims, they've lost the knowledge. They've lost modesty. When they see something they don't like, they don't know, they've lost modesty to say, maybe I'm wrong. They say, no, you're wrong. They've lost intelligence. Inshallah, Rahman, we will get it back. Elzubillah in the Shaitan Rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Now it's hard right now to Islam to Halman. Holy Prophet is saying, O my nation, renew your religion. And we're renewing our religion by saying, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah.